Hello everybody, welcome back to the top 5 bug bounty resources of this week. It's great seeing you guys again and may I just compliment you on your handsomeness today. Thank you guys for returning. I'm going to go over 5 of uh, some of my favorite tools that I use in bug bounty hunter hunting. And I'm going to be doing this every single week. So the first tool I want to be showing you, or the first resource actually, uh, this is a tool but I'm going to be going over a lot of resources. By the way guys, links will be in the description. The first thing I want to show you guys is Lazy Hunter. Uh, I found this person called, sorry if I butcher your name, Rakeshmain on uh, Twitter. And he tweeted out this tweet about Lazy Hunter, it's a tool he created. It's uh, available on Docker, so um, Lazy Hunter is pretty much just a collection, a framework of all the common tools that you use during bug bounty hunting. Um, some of the prerequisites, you have to create two commands, you have to create two directories, executing two commands, make directory, and then you do a docker pull, and then you can just start it up with docker run. Now of course you have to have the docker, uh, docker installed, I have the docker desktop application, but you can also just use the CLI, you can just go to docker.com and download the desktop application, start it up, and then you can do all of these commands. So now on to the tool, say for example, so this is Lazy Hunter, say for example I want to go to, um, of course I need to set my target first, my target will be for example google.com, now when I go to sublister, it will automatically fill in everything that needs to know and start my uh, script, so as you can see for example, when I use NockPy on google.com, it'll start knocking out these subdomains. Um, one of the other things you can do is recon. I'm not going to go over exploits, by the way. Um, endpoint enumeration, also very useful. Wayback machine is in here. There are some scanners like Nikto, uh, for example. So you can just press start and go. You can also change some of the parameters and you can uh, update the content of the window using the check progress button. Usually it'll auto update as far as I can tell. Also WordPress scan for when you have WordPress websites. Really, really useful guys. I really like this tool. Um, it doesn't save results, but you can just copy and paste them from the results window. Um, there are a lot of different topics available. So on the recon you have harvester, data exploit, black widow and census.py. Uh, under exploiters you have SQL map and comics. Um, under networks you have nmap and then you have automation for the domains. So this is some kind of script, I don't know for sure. Um, I would advise you guys to um, go check out this tool. I'll leave a link in the description also to this person's Twitter page. Thank you for creating it. Uh, on to the next topic. I have a flowchart here. This one is for recon. So um, this is something I use a lot. Uh, I'm going to go over it with you guys real quick. So you start with a target, you have a domain.com. It can either be a unique domain, so www.google.com for example, or your target can be star.google.com, which means that you have a wildcard and you can do, you can pretty much uh, look for any domain. So when you have a single unique domain, uh, one of the things you can do is nmap, uh, of course. One of the things you should do is nmap, I have a video about that, I'll link it in the description as well. Um, it's called Web App Recon 101. Um, one of the other things you also will have to do is GoBuster. I use GoBuster, you can also use Turf Search, it's up to you. Photon Scan is really useful. Wayback Machine, those are the tools that I showed you in Lazy Hunter. Um, so let's go back for real quick. When we go to the recon part, sorry, the endpoint enumeration part, you have the Wayback Machine URLs and the Wayback Unifier. Really useful scripts. Um, you also have Aaron, Aaron or Argon scan, uh, paramath.py, uh, this is for parameters, cc and xss create. These are for uh, xss of course. Um, you also have to have burp suite open as a proxy, uh, use some scanners if it's allowed. Um, when you have multiple domains, I always use a mass for domain enumeration. I'll also make a video about that, it's pretty easy, Subfinder, Aquatone and MassDNS uh, all help using uh, doing the recon part. 
when you end up with a subdomain list, of course, you go back to the same methodology. Uh, you have to do the testing. Uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you guys is when you automate all of this, what you can do is you can use a mast to for and all of these tools to find your uh, domains, your list of domains. And then on that subdomain list, you can use all DNS to find all of the other uh, domains related to that. And then use eyewitness for screenshots. Now, when you are pretty good with programming, you can automate all of this stuff in a, in a single shell script, uh, allowing you to um, pretty much just input, for example, google.com as a domain and get a, a list of screenshots as an output. So that way you can easily um, pick your target that you would like to attack from a list of possible targets. Now another thing I wanted to show you guys for bug bounty hunting is the integrity block, the Twitter recap. I really like this one um, because it has a lot of tips and it is really structured well. So for example, if you want the YouTube cross-site scripting, uh, these are all the tweets that integrity tweeted. Um, about specific tips, about specific uh, bug bounty tips that you can find. So I really like this. I, I would advise you guys to read them all. Uh, they can always help. It doesn't hurt. It only costs maybe an hour or two of your time. And they have helped me a lot in the past. The next item I want to show you guys is this checklist specifically made uh, on the web application hacker's handbook. This is a checklist that somebody put together it's really useful. Thank you, Jason Haddix. <laughs> Thank you very much for creating this checklist. Um, that's not just somebody, that's Jason Haddix. He's a real, he's a real legend in bug bounty hunting. So um, this is a checklist based on the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. I would advise you guys to also buy this book. Um, there are a lot of extra information about all of these items, but you can just Google what you need to know, of course. So if I want to test for path traversal, I can just Google what this is and I can learn about it. But it's a really useful checklist, especially if you know what you're doing, you can just use this to go through your target and you can be sure that you didn't miss anything. So I want to share this with you guys as well. And the last thing I want to show you guys is a list of bug bounty write-ups that were published back up until 2012 and even earlier than that with unknown publication dates. So these are really really useful if you want to for example attack Google. You can look for all of the Google uh, specific reports and you can sometimes even see how much they made. This is super super useful. Um, if you guys are bored, if you don't know what to do, read some write-ups. These will help you gain an understanding of what other people are finding and it will help you get a better idea of what you should be looking for. So these are the things I want to show you guys for this week. Next week there will be a new episode showing you new things. Um, this is going to be a series that's going to come out on Saturdays every time. So I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, love and chicken grease.